So continuing on the theme of games that apparently came out, like Six Days in Fallujah, Boundary is an early access and actually came out in April. So it's been out for about two months now and so something that I was looking forward to. And if you don't know what this is, essentially it's a space shooter, but it's a little bit more tactical than something like Call of Duty. It's more like something I wouldn't compare it to Rainbow Six Siege, but that's what a lot of people compare it to. I think that's simply just because it's a quick time to kill and you have operators to choose from. But that's a lot of games now, so it kind of fits into that category, but in space. Let me start out by saying this is purely a multiplayer game. And so I'm going to be comparing this to Rainbow Six Siege a lot. But for the most part, it's more like I said, a balance between Call of Duty and other hero type shooters. So the game pretty much singles it down to giving you a select number of operators to choose from that each have their own customization, abilities, weapons, all that stuff. Where this falls short, my problem with this is that each one starts out with a unique primary, secondary, and I'm going to call them gadgets. And then everyone starts out with the grappling hook as their movement ability. This is all great, and it would be nice if each operator had a unique thing, like in Rainbow Six Siege. But, comparing it to something like Battlefield, you have your initial unique ability that is tied to each operator, and then you have shared abilities. So, for example, the scout has like a sensor dart that he shoots out, right? But then, there's like a grenade launcher, and a hive, and a probe, and an EMP grenade, and a motion sensor that other classes also have access to. Now. If you want to do this with, again, keeping on theme with Rainbow Six Siege, secondary gadgets, right? In Rainbow, you have barbed wire and impact grenades and uh, motion sensors, all of that stuff, that bulletproof cameras, that's a secondary gadget that shares between each operator on the same side, which is fine. But the primary gadgets never overlap. Well, they might have similar uses, and I get Rainbow Six Siege has been out much longer than Boundary, so it has a lot more characters. Even with fewer characters, I think specifically with fewer characters, you want the weapons and specifically the gadgets to be locked to each class to make you actually want to level up each individual class. Now what's the gameplay? Is the game actually fun? So for $25, it's pretty much exactly what you expect. Aside from the problems I just listed, it's good. It's really good. There's your typical game modes, domination, team deathmatch, all of that good stuff. The maps, while you can't do anything too crazy because it's in space and there's a lot of verticality to it, it gives you enough cover to move around and kind of rotate and have your little peaky holes if you want to do some sniping, but also there's enough mobility to where if you want to use a class that has a shotgun or an assault rifle to where you can kind of move around and get from point A to point B. Now, that being said, is it the most fun game on your own? I'm gonna say no. If you want something to just pass the time and like play for a weekend, play for a day, and you're fine dropping 25 bucks on a game, then fine, you will have fun with this for the day, right? I guarantee you that. But if you want something that's gonna last you a long time, something you're gonna come back to, you either need to one, maybe look somewhere else, because there's not enough depth here right now, or get some friends to get this with you, kind of coordinate, try a bit harder, and then this could be really fun. Because the, again, the core gameplay, it's solid, right? You're just essentially a first-person shooter, but with a bit more verticality, and you can rotate left and right freely whenever you want, and there's some exosuit-type movement, right? But for the most part, it's boiled down to the fact that you're in space and the individual abilities. So if they just tweak the abilities a little bit, like I said, locking some to each class and making them feel different, and then adding more characters to actually play so that you have a reason to level up each character, like I previously stated, this would be a lot of fun, right? Now, the only servers are in Asia. That's a lot of the complaints in the uh, Steam reviews. I found a match in like seven seconds every time. So it wasn't a problem for me, but I wasn't queuing with anybody else. So if you're queuing with friends, and it also was the middle of the day on a Saturday when I was playing, so that probably helped. Don't know how this server is gonna hold up on like a weekday at six in the morning. You might just not be able to find a match, but Again, I don't want to go into too long of a rant on this game. It's not something I played for hours and hours and hours on end. Something that I tried out, wanted to give my opinion on it. It dropped. I was interested in it. I think I've talked about it before. But if you guys have played this, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If it's something that you just totally forgot about, well, here you go. Now you can go play it. If you've never seen it before, let me know if you think if it looks interesting or not. And I'll see you guys on the next one.